guys, me again, Sue Lynn from Rem Pet Bath and Beauty. Got just reminding everybody that the fall solstice giveaway is going on. It started last Friday on uh, August 28th, running through September 11th at midnight Eastern Standard Time, and we will announce the winner on September 15th. And to be entered to win, all you have to do is just click that red button and be a subscriber. So it's been a great run and we've had so many new people join the Run Pet family and I love you all. You guys are so fantastic. Incredible, incredible, incredible family we have here at Run Pet. So I'm very thankful, very grateful and ha ha honored <laughs> that you guys watch my videos. So. Um, I'm actually giving you the recipe to my bath salts. I don't think I've ever seen anybody make bath salts the way I make bath salts. So I don't know, maybe you have. Um, but I am going to leave the recipe in the description box below. I know I say it in the video as well, but um, go ahead and use it. You know, I love it. It's a great recipe. So you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Hi guys, it's me again, Sue Lynn from Run Pet Bath and Beauty. Sorry, I didn't get my cups out first before I did this, so let me grab the cups that I ooh, need for this. We had some recent shows and we sold all the bath salts that we had in stock, so I am making bath salts. Hold on, forgot one last thing. Okay, got to have my, my sieve. Um, I'm going to put this on the other side of me so it's not in your way. This is baking soda. And I don't know if anybody that makes bath salts the way I do, you'll have to leave it in the comments below if you do. I like to get... I need four cups, ooh, because uh, I'm making a lot of bath salts. I need four cups of baking soda. Now I'm going to have to, that was three. But I want to make sure there's no clumps in there. Okay, one more. And four. Okay. Oh, there wasn't very many clumps in there at all. See, that's why I buy Crafter's Choice. Their baking soda doesn't uh, get a lot of clumps in it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody else makes bath salts the way I do. I've never seen anybody do it that, this way. But I'm going to use sunflower oil. Ugh. My oven is preset to 170 degrees. And what I'm going to do after I get my oil in this baking soda, we are going to spread it out on our baking sheets. And we're going to stick it in the oven and uh, turn the oven off. Um, after we stick it in the oven and give it a chance to dry. So we're going to use a quarter cup to start with. Um, sometimes I have to use about a tablespoon more than that, but it's not all the time. It just depends on how um, humid it is and it hasn't rained in a few days here. so. We're just going to get this as spread out all over this baking soda as possible. And what this does, as far as bath salts go, because this will go into my bath salt mixture, um, because the oil is going to be anchored and dried in this baking soda, I'm not going to have to worry as much about spoilage. I do still add uh, a preservative to my bath salts. 
I think that anything that's going to come in contact with water, because you don't know, you know, somebody could be putting bath salts, <laughs> excuse me, somebody could be, and everything in this thing has been alcohol, by the way, all my cups and the bowl and whatnot, you know me, I practice very good sanitary, you know, stuff, um, but sometimes, you know, they'll say, I provide like a little wooden spoon in order for them to use the bath salts with. And sometimes that'll touch the water and they'll put it in the jar if the jar is half empty and then water's introduced to the whole thing. So I do put a preservative in it. I don't think I need any more oil. See, it's kind of sticking together like a bath bomb would. That's what we want it to, we want to make sure that all the baking soda is coated. So yeah, I think that's really good. We've got most of it. Make sure and pull up on the bottom stuff. And, uh, okay. So um, I have to let this completely dry, which um, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. So by tonight, I should be able to uh, make the bath salt. We'll see. Let me put my lid back on there. Okay, take my first tray. And I'm not sure if I'll need both, but just in case, we don't want it. And these trays have also been alcoholed. I know they look dirty, but I swear they're not. They're just completely stained from everything that we do in them and on them and <laughs> whatnot. Yeah, I'm going to need both of them. So we're going to spread this out and put this over here. Get our other one. Okay, whoop. Get everything out. Can you guys see me? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's a real simple process. It does take a few though. But this way at least the oil is dried inside that baking soda. Because I use like, four or five different salts in my bath. Five, five salts in my bath salts. I had to think about that for a second. And the baking soda adds a nice silkiness um, to the water, which is nice. Okay, so I am going to take off my gloves and spray my, spray my, uh, come on, spray. I'm spraying and rubbing alcohol into my hands so I can touch these trays and my stove and whatnot. And I'm going to put these in the oven and turn, I just turned the oven off and these will get dry and I will see you in a little bit. Okay guys, we're back. We have our baking soda um, all dried with oil and I marked it BS with oil, which I know that sounds funny, but you know, I made more than what I need so that way I can have it already done and ready when I have to make more bath salts. We are making three different scents today so I am going to double my recipe and I can give you my recipe I have no problem with that. Um, I in like with my bath bombs I put my Epsom salt through my Ninja. I don't do that with uh, bath salts and again this is a sterile uh, environment project that you have to spray everything. I've sprayed the bags, I've sprayed, you know, everything that, that we're using has been sprayed. The bowls, the countertop, my camera, the lights, everything. So oh, I almost did that and I put these bath salts into mason jars and I have separated the rings from, you know, the inner piece and those are alcoholed as well as the jars. So my, my basic recipe, I'm doubling it, but I'm going to give you the basic recipe. The basic recipe calls for four cups of Epsom salt. So 
So one of these bags, because it's a two pound bag, is four cups. So, but I'm doubling my recipe, and hopefully, hopefully it fits in this bowl. I might have to go upstairs and bring a pan down here to sterilize it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we might have to do that. <laughs> Let me throw these away. Okay, I'm going to read alcohol because I just went out of my sterile field there. Okay, and we need the basic recipe calls for one cup of kosher sugar or kosher sugar, kosher salt. I use many different kinds of salts in this. So we're going to put two cups in there. One. Woo! Two. And it calls for uh, one cup of sea salt, but like I said, I'm doubling my recipe. So this is eight ounces, and this is a very, yeah, let me show you. This is a very coarse grain of sea salt. So let me get all these off of here. Come on, come on. It's got like a, a seal on there. There we go. one too. Okay. So these need to be thrown away as well. Let me get these thrown away. And re-alcohol. Okay. Uh, and then it calls for, oh shoot, I don't have my pink Himalayan salt out here. I'll be right back. Okay, now I alcoholed my thing for pink, my pink Himalayan salt. Um, I alcoholed it over by the stove so it wasn't on my um, it wasn't on my sterile area. And this is a finer grain of pink Himalayan salt. Oh, and it calls for one cup, so we need two. So one, I know this is kind of counterproductive, but I can't really stick that cup in there yet. I will soon. Okay, and two. Okay, and then it calls for our, my baking soda, which I'm going to put in last. I need a half a cup of powdered milk, which I have to cut this open. Um, and I include powdered milk. This is optional. I include powdered milk because of the ancient Egyptian history that, that milk represents. Um, in ancient Egypt, they would take milk baths. Um, for beauty, and it was also part of their uh, embalming process. So there's a quarter cup. So we're going to need a whole cup of powdered milk. Um, it was part of their embalming process as well. So it just, you know, it's just something I like to add. Plus, it adds this nice creaminess to the bath water with these salts. I put powdered milk in my bath bombs as well. Okay, and the rest of it all has to do with fragrance and all of that, and I'm not doing that right now. But I will write the recipe um, down in the description box below so you guys have it. 
But now it's just about mixing it really, really good. And making sure you get all the way down to the bottom and get all of these ingredients. Now, of course, if you're just making one scent, um, it would be a little bit easier because then you could just add your scent and mix it all up and whatnot. But like I said, I'll give you the recipe, so. And sometimes you got to watch that powdered milk because it likes to, you know, stick together and not mix real well. <clears throat> when I use it in my bath bombs, it gets put through the Ninja, so I don't have that problem. And I have two other bowls here sterilized that I am going to put this stuff, put the, you know, put it in. Because I have the mason jars that I use are 16 ounces, and I want at least two of each just to, to have. And depending on how they sell <clears throat> at our show, we will, I'll come home Sunday night and make more. Because for the foreseeable future, today is, what is today? July, uh, oh geez, I don't know what today is. 16, I had to think about that, geez. Okay, so that's mixed good enough. And I'm gonna take, put that over there because we don't need that anymore. Here's our first bowl. So we want four cups of this mixture. Because like I said, you know, each one is 16 ounces. And if I have extra, I put them in these little sample caps. These little, uh, ooh, these little sample cups that people can use. And when I do put them out, I do do, the, do it by weight. Now, this one has a little bit more than four cups, I can guarantee you that. And as a matter of fact, let me put a little bit more in each one of these. Um, but this is going to be our man eater. This is going to be our love spell, which sells really well. I don't need those cups anymore. Okay, so we're going to start with... Oh, I'm moving you. I'm moving you. Sorry. So sorry. i got to get all this stuff out of here. Let me just move that over. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our baking soda. You know what? Let me clear all of this off really quick, and then we will do what we're going to do. I'll be right back. Okay, I changed my gloves and everything because I was out of my sterile zone. Okay, I'm going to use my... I've already alcoholed them. Um, I'm going to use my, I just touched my, my face, damn it. See, that's what you got, you know what, that goes off, that goes off too. My nose itched. <laughs> but you have to keep sterile guys, it's really, really important because this is going to go in other people's homes. So, all right, and I forgot to mention that my baking soda mixture with the oil also has my preservative in it. Once it had cooled down past 140, the oven did, I went ahead and I added my preservative to the baking soda and oil portion. I added it at 1%. Um, and that, I mean, it's, it's really optional, but for me, because it is a bath product and people are going to be taking it into their bathrooms, I think it's important that it gets done. Now, the recipe calls for um, 
a cup of baking soda. But because I have split this up into three, I'm only adding a half a cup to each of them. And when I add the baking soda and oil portion, I add my fragrance and my colorant to that. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Let me put this over here and get a pipette. We're going to start with this one because it's man eater. And man eater is fairy tale pink. And I've alcoholed my spoons and my jars, the outside of my jars. I'm going to put the colorant right in there and I'll put my fragrance oil in the baking soda portion. Okay, so my fragrance oil. And you can use anywhere between three and six milliliters. That's what I usually do. There's two. I use depending on the strength of the fragrance. So that's all the fragrance I need for this whole thing. And it will be fragrant, trust me. And I will be changing my gloves after each fragrance because I don't want, you know, the one fragrance to get into the other. And sometimes I put um, polysorbate 80 in here. I mean, you could even get away with 20. But because I've dried the oil with the baking soda, because I've tried it both ways, and the mica will disperse in the water. You don't have so I'm not using lakes or dyes. So, um, but if you wanted to, you could use a poly in there. And I'll write that down, that that's optional, depending on if you're using lakes and dyes for your bath salts. This is a little bit darker than I made it last time. <laughs> wow. Okay, let me get my mason jar, which... I'm going to start with two of them and see where we are. You know what I forgot to do? Like a dumb, like a dummy. I have my scale all alcoholed over here and I should have, I should be weighing these. So let me put this empty jar on there. Okay, so that's 8.50. Yep, 15, because it's only going to fit 15 ounces. And like I said, if I have extra, I will add it to little, uh, these little jars, or not jars, um, plastic container things. Oh, that's 1430. 15. Okay, let's see if we can get one more. All right. And how I package these are really cute. I have fabric, and I take the fabric with uh, um, I hot glue some cotton cloth on it, just a little square piece, so it's really cute. And then I wrap it with ribbon, and I always sell these with a spoon for customers to be able to spoon it out if they want to. $13.85 and we are going to have some samples which is good I'm glad 15 all right let 
be. And I seal these as well with um, shrink wrap. Okay, so let me get all of this out of the way. So we have, and it's an actual ball mason jar, so they can reuse it if they want to. And I will post pictures at the end of the video of all three of them. So I'm just going to make the man eater with you. But I'm also making Never Gonna Give You Up, which is the cucumber wasabi cilantro. And I'm making lavender. And sometimes I will put botanicals in here. Those are optional as well. But uh, not this time. I'm not putting botanicals in them. Uh, I did last time. And they sold pretty good. But I, I just don't want to do the botanicals this time. I want to see how they do without them. So I will see you guys later.